Hey guys, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 36 by 24 foot garage slab. Now this slab is going to be just six inches thick all the way through. That's what the that's what the spec ordered, so that's the way we formed it, and this is the way we're pouring it. Now the subgrade there was about two feet of gravel put in here, and the gravel was was leveled and compacted. It was compacted really really hard, but the level was off just a little bit. So up here in this corner where we're first starting to pour you know we're going to be down below the form just a little bit and then in the back corner the very opposite one diagonal it's like seven or eight inches thick down there so uh, we got a good average of about six inches throughout and, and the concrete slab is going to be plenty strong enough for the you know the cars it's going to hold on this residential garage we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete too, so we got a little bit extra cement and strength in the concrete. And like you, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know I always use a water reducer in my mix, so we can pour a little bit looser slump without adding water. That's what the water reducer does, and it doesn't affect the strength at all. So what we're going to do is we get a couple trucks here. We're going to dump this first truck right out, get it all leveled out screeded both loaded and then we're going to jump onto the second truck but this is the basic procedure for how we do that you know we'll because we're very experienced we'll dump out the whole truck whether it's seven yards eight yards ten yards whatever it is and then we'll get it leveled out because we're pretty fast if you're not that fast you don't need to dump out the whole truck like we are you could just dump out one section and get that leveled off I just want to say thanks to the sponsor for this video, which is the Concrete Underground. The Concrete Underground is my private training academy where I teach you how to do all the same types of concrete stuff that I do with my private training videos. Plus, you get one-on-one -on -one consultation with me too. So if you want to check that out, that's down in the description below. We're going to just finish pouring this truck out. We've almost got this one emptied out. So the guys are basically just using, using those concrete rakes in their eye to get everything leveled out as close to level as they can. With the, most, of the, most of the slab, about two-thirds of it is even with the top of the form. And then the forms here closest to you where you're watching, the slab's down inside them a little bit. We had to snap a chalk line on them. So we're going to just go with that chalk line. Now what we're doing here is we, we're pulling up the wire mesh as we pour the concrete. And then on the edges we're setting a couple rows of number 4 rebar. And we're just going to push that down in about to the middle of that slab. And the reason we're setting it in afterwards is just to make sure it's right in the middle. And it doesn't get pushed down any lower than that. So that's a pretty easy way to set your rebar around the edges. Now what Darren and Eric are going to do is they're going to mag float the edges and I'm going to set a grade, I'm going to set a wet pad, what we call a wet pad, right in the middle. Actually I'm going to set a couple of them and that's going to be what we're going to use to screed off from in the middle of this thing. You can see the second truck's backing in there. It's pretty early in the morning, it's about 6.30 a.m. in the morning we're starting here. Oh, it's a little, the sun's just coming up. We want to try to get this in before the sun comes up. That's the way we usually pour things. That way, if we do have a second pour, you know, we're on, off, leave a couple guys here, go off, pour the second one, and we're on the second one by about 9 a.m. So I'm going to make what I call my wet pad right there in the middle. You'll see how we screed off this in just a second. And I'm using my laser. That's, that's a Topcon self-leveling laser. I got a link for that down in the description too guys if you want to check that out. That's the one I recommend for doing concrete work, doing earthwork. It's definitely the best one for the money you know, is what I've found. So I'll use the, the laser with my grade stick and the receiver and I'm going to set that wet pad to the same level as my exterior so this, this slab is going to be perfectly flat when we're done. When I have it right where I want it, I put a little X on the pad to let everybody know that's to grade. And then we can screed off from that. So as soon as Eric and Darren get done mag floating the edges nice and smooth, and I get that next pad shot, then we're going to get to screeding this thing. We're just going to hand screed today. Um, just 
because we're old school and that's what we wanted to do today. We just felt like just screeding this by hand. So we're going to use a, I think we got our 13 foot screed on this one. Just a magnesium screed. It's really lightweight. And we'll kick screed, what we call kick screed the concrete on this one. After I made my wet pads in the middle, got them to grade, I figured out we was a little bit low in there. So me and Darren are pulling in a little bit of concrete. That way we don't have to stop and do it when we start screeding. We'll get that pulled into where we need it and then we'll get those middle, that middle pad struck off to grade. So we're just going to pull that along the top of those wet pads and make one big wet pad right in the middle. And we don't, we never set two bys or, or a grade two by to, to screed off from or anything like that. We've always screed it off the wet concrete like that. That's how I was taught and that's how I teach all my guys that work for me is, is we just wet screed everything like this. So we're just looking to strike that off even with the pad that's been mag floated around the edge. And there's a certain way we do it. I teach that in the training to make sure you're nice and level, you're not high or low. And then we just use those pads to screed off them like that. We don't have to pull anything out after. We don't have to fill in anything. It really makes it pretty simple if you know how to do it that way. We're going to get this whole bay, I call this a bay, we'll get this whole side straight edged off, nice and level. And then we'll just move over to the next side. So it wouldn't really matter what size slab you were pouring, you're going to do it in the basically the same procedure, you know, the same type of steps, one truck at a time. And then you move on to the next one. We're going to be, this is going to be a power trial slab too. That'll be in the next video, not in this one, but I'm going to show you how we power trial this, how we finish off a slab like this, make it nice and nice and smooth and easy to clean, easy to maintain. Let me know down in the comments if you think screeding concrete like this is easy, if you think it's hard, if you've ever tried it. Um, I mean, it, it, there's a little learning curve to it when you're first starting. It's definitely easier to start with screeding right off the top of a form and just getting the motion down and feeling how the concrete feels under the screed. That's definitely the easiest way to start. But then after you have the feel for it, it's not too bad doing it right off of a wet pad like that. You just got to be careful you don't dig in. So Eric's going to get that whole section bow floated. And then Darren and I are going to finish start, uh, I mean, we're going to start dumping out that second truck. You can see how nice and smooth that bow float makes it. The, the nicer you can get it with the bow float, the easier it's going to be to power trial. That just makes the whole finishing process that much easier. Get those rocks, the aggregate pushed down, bring up the paste and the cream. Where we're from here in Maine, most of the trucks that we use are what we call rear dumps like this. They're not the front dumps. We do have, There are some companies that do have the front dumps, but they're just not that close to where we're from. They're a little over an hour away from us. We got two ready mix companies that are pretty close, so we'll that, and they all basically have rear dumps like this. So we always have to run the chute, which kind of takes a man just to run the chute. Um, that's what the front dumps make pretty easy you know the guy in the cab runs the chute so you don't need an extra man to do that but we're pretty used to it it's what we do every day the key is still even though you have a rear dump like this still having a good driver that understands the process that makes it a lot easier so all you got to do is give him a hand signal and he knows what you mean
Oh, there I am making another. This will be the last wet pad I think I got to make. And then the screed will be able to reach from that to the outer edges. A lot of times it'll just be two of us pouring a slab like this. You know, Eric, the guy in the green shirt works for me part time. He just works summers. Um, but he's been working for me for over 20 years doing it. So, and then, you know, Darren's full time. And then Luke just happened to be on a different job this morning. So Luke's not here with us this morning. And then a lot of times you guys have seen my other videos. My daughter, Tia, she worked for me in the summer. She's still in college. But three guys pouring a, a 36 by 24 slab like this, if you know what you're doing, is, is really pretty easy. It takes us probably 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to pour a slab like this without hurrying. Screed one bay at a time, you know, make sure you're not too high, you're not too low. The guy raking the concrete really is the guy that's working the hardest. And if he knows what he's doing, if he's a good raker, then even his job really isn't too bad. When we're screeding like that, when two guys are screeding at the same time, you know, it's just important that you're, you're both on the same page, you're both pulling the, con pulling the screed at the same time, lifting it up at the same time. That makes it a heck of a lot easier. Now we'll get this last little bay pulled, uh, poured out. Hopefully we got enough concrete. And then we'll get it screeded down and bull floated. Now let me know down in the comments who has a slab to pour this year that they want to get done. Who, And how many of you guys are thinking of doing it yourself that don't normally pour concrete? Let me know down in the comments if, you, if you're the type of person who wants to try to do this themselves. And if my videos are helping you at all, you know, try to get that figured out. We pour concrete, you know, when, when it's our season, our season, our busy season pretty much goes from the middle of April until about the 1st of December. And generally, we're pouring concrete just about every day, every single day. So we'll pour a slab, a house, a garage, a patio, a pool deck, something every single day. Finish it, get something ready for the next day or, the you know, get a couple things ready for the next few days or the next week or whatever but we're always pouring and finishing concrete and then setting and prepping something else so it's generally a pretty busy week for us we'll work Saturdays too if we have to I and mean, if we get some rainy weather and we gotta work Saturdays then we'll work Saturdays Saturdays are a lot of the times they're the days I get to go look at jobs meet people do estimates Now Darren's screeding right off top of that 2 by now, and then I'm doing the wet pad thing in the middle. <laughs> so I'm kick screeding in there. So this will end up being a three bay garage. He's going to have three nine foot doors there in the front. And then a pass door, a three foot door here on the side over here by the laser. And I'm going to show you, I'll show you in the next video just, you know, how we go about tapering the garage doors, how we power trial something like this and get it really smooth. I also have that training, you know, there's, there's video training like that in the concrete underground too. So if you really want the in-depth stuff, you got to, you got to join the concrete underground for that. And Darren's going to get that bowl floated. Get it all smoothed off. 
and then we just let it sit and wait until it's ready to power trowel. Basically, it'll, you know, on a day like today, it'll be on it's pouring out right on dirt like this. It'll probably be about an hour before we have to worry about finishing this thing. And then once it starts going, you know, if the sun comes out and it starts going, it's going to dry pretty fast out in the sun. So that's how we pour a 36 by 24 foot 6 inch concrete slab, guys. So again, if I come out with a couple videos a week about everything to do with concrete. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go down there and hit subscribe. If you find any value in these videos, you know, smash that like button. And we'll see you on the next one, guys.